that holds a lot of templates you can, that you can choose from. So you can just uh, go into their website and they have like a list of templates. You click on them and you can view how that website will look like, uh, like for example, on your computer screen, on a cell phone screen or something else. So that's super helpful. So I basically pick one, one template from those websites, uh, which is called, uh, okay, it's, it's not saying its name there, but, but uh, so it's basically this website. So if you click on that, on that link, uh, that will bring you there. Um, uh, so basically I, I pick a template from that website and then I try to fill in what kind, uh, all the materials I want to be uh, on, my, on my web page. Uh, so basically there's this four different sections uh, as I've seen from like other people's website. So the first one is just a, like, like a mugshot uh, of yourself and then the name and uh, your, your uh, location right now. And uh, like most people, I think when most people click into your website, they are looking for links like this, like uh, your uh, CV, your publication list, or trying to contact you. So I, I, I'm trying to like include all the links very well at the beginning of the web page so that it helps people to find all the information they want. And then I, uh, the next section is basically a um, short introduction about myself, uh, what I'm working on, where I'm at right now. Um, and then I uh, put there uh, a bunch of um, uh, introductions to the research I'm doing right now. Uh, and uh, I, I found it particularly useful because uh, we can include the coffee video we made uh, when we write new papers here. So I think that will, that will be helpful for people to see. And also we can include links here, like the ADS entry of the paper, um, like the data products from the paper and the slides. Uh, and it will help people when they want to include some uh, results from the paper that I wrote. Yeah. And, by, the, uh, by the way, are we, are we still doing the, are we still doing the, um, the YouTube version of coffee for any new publications that our grad students are publishing, newly publishing? Mm -hmm. Are we still doing that? Uh, not all of us are doing that, but okay. uh, some of us are still doing that. So maybe, yeah, maybe we should encourage uh, grad students who have recent publication to, to you know, record uh, this video and put it on YouTube. And uh, your, and then in the future it would be very convenient to, to to put that in your website. You know that show your presentation to presentation skills and also show how you know your your knowledge about the the, the subject you're working on. I think it's very useful. It's a very um, useful demonstration of your presentation skill. Yeah. We we talked about this during uh, journal club last semester. We were, I think it was Adam who was in charge and he was encouraging everyone to start this up again, but I think, you know, to some extent, everything got derailed by COVID. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I, I will make sure that to, to nudge grad student to, <laughs> to create this video. I find it very useful. Yeah. I it's mean, unique. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely. So, I mean, when I was creating the video, like it's, it's right after I like submit this to archive sorry, right before I submit this to archive. So it's been the entire journey of like writing the paper, fighting against the referees. So it's like, like I felt already tired at that time. So it's, and it, it's, it requires like two or three more days of work to do this video. So it's kind of, ah. yeah, it's kind of tiring. But uh, I think afterwards, like after a few months, I feel like oh, maybe it's still worth it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's definitely worth it. <laughs> right. Anyways, a, vi um, a video is worth thousands of picture. A picture is worth <laughs> thousands of words. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Um, right. Yeah. So I think um, so. So yeah. So so on the personal website, it will be a good place. This will this will be a good place to host those videos, and uh, it, you can also include some other papers that's uh, like like we're called author song, um, and that will be, that will also be useful. Uh, and then at the end, there's just a like contact meeting, um, like email and all the other uh, link to the other, web other websites like GitHub. Um, I guess, uh, finally, some words about um, using GitHub. So, so GitHub is actually not a uh, website development tool uh, in the sense that it helps you set up all the codes. It, it, it does none of that. GitHub is just a place of host uh, all your codes. So it's what, what we need to do is basically we download a template from the website I mentioned or some other like website uh, template hosting place. 
and then we develop it uh, locally on our computer, and then we uh, upload all the code into a GitHub repository uh, with the naming convention like this. So if I go to my um, if I go, go to my GitHub page, I can show you. Um, so basically, you create a, um, a GitHub repo with the name naming convention of your GitHub uh, like your GitHub ID dot GitHub dot io, and uh, host all your code there. And then I, I think GitHub will automatically recognize that, oh, this is a, um, like a personal web page thing. So I should render this and uh, like create a web page that has this exact um, URL. And then uh, after a while, uh, when you like insert this URL into your uh, address, um, like address link, uh, like GitHub will, will try to set this up for you. So GitHub is basically a place that hosts your code and render your code into a web page. So yeah, I think I think like this got more popular in the recent years because like this is a third party thing. Uh, when you like move from one institute to another, you don't need to like migrate your website together with you. So that's kind of convenient. Yeah. So than, yeah. yeah. So can I ask, is that the only advantage of using GitHub on this? Like, what's what's the like? Yeah. What, what's it? What's what's the difference between doing it there than doing it on the like? Ohio State thing. I mean, we can definitely do it on the Ohio State thing. Uh, I, I just, yeah, I just don't know how. I haven't, <laughs> just, yeah, that requires like asking like d different people about this and GitHub, it seems like I don't need to ask anybody questions. I can just post it, post, post it there. But, I know uh, on the Ohio State thing, um, we did, we had to make our websites for like um, class, for our class for the first semester. Um, Kachanik, I mean, Stanek wanted us to make them, but uh, I know that a couple of us looked at it and it looks, um, it's actually quite difficult and it looks almost like it was made for a blog um, instead of like an actual website. Um, but I, I don't know if there's another template you can use, but I played around with it and it seems like it would just be a lot more of a hassle um, than to use like a template and then put it on GitHub um, and link that instead of trying to use their their template. Right. So can I ask a very basic quick question? It's embarrassing how little I know about web pages, how everything works. But so my understanding is that, you know, I think I actually have a web page because I like, Chris made me copy the HTML file from his folder to mine. So essentially my my web page is essentially Stanex web page with my name on it, um, <laughs> and uh, and and you know I did that four years ago and I haven't touched it since. So my question is: so when you do it on GitHub, do you still have to like edit the HTML file? Is 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 all of that the same? Like I still don't understand what's the difference between doing it on the Ohio State thing and doing it here. Like why is it easier to do it here? I Sorry, so my understanding is just that you are just putting your code at a different location. That's the okay. only difference. Okay. Um, and of course, there's the other difference that who is rendering your code to turn it into an actual web page you can visit. Uh -huh. If you are hosting it on Ohio State, then like, I don't know, like the Ohio State server will do that. And if you host it on GitHub, then the GitHub server will do that for you. But uh, I think the, the adding the code, editing the code part is, it's our job, so there's no getting around of that. Like, I, I don't think there's any website that can turn automatically turn someone else's website into like something you want to have. So yeah, I think that it still involves a lot of um, um, editing code and uh, mo modifying others' website to uh, adapt into your yeah in your um, favorite version. So I was I was just wondering on that. I mean, it seems that a lot of Astronomers I talk to, whenever they would make a website, whether they use GitHub or whatever the university um, web space is provided, they, they end up editing HTML code. And I'm just not quite sure if that's really necessary. I mean, there are so many, so many services out there like Foursquare or Weebly, which I use, or just many other things where you just do a drag and you just do a, what do you call it? Like what you see is what you get. Edit. Module. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just. Module I just, yeah, so I just, I just wonder because, you know, you, you've got a website here that looks pretty and um, uh, no question. I just wonder if, and, and sure, like you cop, you can sort of copy a template and then just edit the code within that and stuff. But like most of those like visual editors, they kind of look pretty, pretty by default. And, 
and they're also free. I mean, you have to pay if you want to get like a unique domain name or if you want to like maybe remove like a Weebly banner at the bottom. But I, I just, I'm not quite like, particularly for student, like I, I would feel like in a first year class, like instead of getting all the first year PhD students to like learn how to HTML code, I mean, we've got enough coding we've got to do. We've got to bloody code papers, let alone our own work. So I'm, I'm just not quite sure coding a website's the most efficient use of our time. But I'm- So yeah. People's opinion. <laughs> From my experience, I I basically adapt other people's website and change it into mine. Uh, I find it is it's not that hard to to adapt a simple simple website or simple web page to mine. So uh, I find it's interesting and also rewarding. To understand the HTML uh, language and uh, you know build a, my personal website that way. Uh, I have never used those modularized uh, website developing software to do that. Uh, so, David, you have experience with that? Uh, what, do you yeah. recommend any website or software? Yeah, I mean, maybe this is a yeah good good uh, good time to kind of compare or discuss the, the 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 difference between you know build up your website from HTML or build your website using some existing software development. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to hijack this particular thing. And like, you know, I don't want to clarify, like, this is a nice looking website. And ultimately, as long as you get there, that's the important thing. But um, uh, yeah, maybe like after we've done these intro things, I can spend five minutes, I can show what, like what, so Romy asked, I use a thing called Weebly. I can just log into my Weebly and show you for five minutes if you want to see what it looks that, like. I think that will be super useful because, you know, that give, that give people an uh, options uh, sure. what to I'm do. I'm curious what Danielle uses, but we'll get to her in a, in a second. David, yeah. Um, yeah. Romy asked a question to send a link of yeah. the oh, Weebly. Yeah. I'll, I'll do that now and then, yeah, I can show it mm -hmm. on my screen. And yep. Go ahead. I also, I also want to say that um, there are also lots of, like I, libraries, I guess is the right word. I'm not sure that basically let you write your web pages in plain text and then it automatically converts them into, you know, pretty looking HTML code. And that's what, I, that's what I'm using. Most of the templates I found for stuff like this are assuming that you're writing a blog and stuff, but you also don't have to directly deal with HTML that gets all the mm -hmm. templates for you set up or you just like put some stuff in a text document and you have a decently nice looking website. Um, I can share the stuff I'm using if people are interested. Yeah, I think it would be nice just to show different ways of doing it. Um, you know, we'll save five minutes for David and five minutes for Matthias to show their way of making a website. Great. Jai, I think the, your website is pretty nicely done. I don't really have any, uh, you know, thing to say about on uh, improving. I think it's already good. Very yeah. Good. Thanks. Uh, yeah. I, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll be happy to hear people's suggestions. Like, mm -hmm. maybe like there's some missing like information that you think it would be nice to have on a personal web page or something like that. And the other thing I would say is that, you know, things we all tend to be appeal to the very nice website, and we end up all having the same website. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it. <laughs> So it's nice to have some personal touch to the website so that when people take a look at your website, they will feel like, wow, this is refreshing, right? Ah, oh, this is another people using another people's template website, if you know what I mean here. Yeah, yeah, fair. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that's my only comment to make it stand out among uh, all the pretty websites. I guess a quick question about uh, JE's web page so um like when you go to people's web page a lot of the times you know that in the like about me section they have like you know oh i like to go hiking i like to cook i like to you know whatever go to the yeah. whatever and like it looks like yours is you know it's it's purely ac academic right um, yeah so yeah. what's i know i would like to get people's opinion on you know is it like what you know, should we follow the standard? Should we follow more like a JE approach or what's, what's your, you know? Well, I, I, I won't, like, I won't suggest people following my approach. I, I, don't, I don't even know whether this is the, a, a good approach or not. Like I've seen people doing it different ways. Some people will just uh, put another paragraph in the about me section, uh, like uh, introducing like ourselves uh, as a human being rather than as a, a, a academic. Um, other people will try to have another section here 
uh, named life or something like that. And you can like yeah, separately put other things like also like host your photo gallery on here. That's totally up to you. So yeah, I think I've seen different people doing different versions. I might end up uh, choosing the second version, but I haven't done that yet. And yeah, I'll be happy to hear people's other people's opinion on this. I think adding some personal information is what make your personal website personal, right? Because yeah. they want to learn about you, your research, and they also want to learn about you. Um, so I don't really uh, against, actually I advocate putting something personal on the web page so that, you know, that make you your more, people look at you more like a whole human being rather than a strong. Yeah, I think it's, it really depends. And, and there is no right or wrong here. You know, it's your personal website. You got to say what to put on it. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Jai. I think this is a, a very nice and a very nicely done website. Uh, Danielle, uh, would you mind? Uh, go ahead and share us with your experience developing your own. All right, well, first of all, I thought it would just be fun um, to show you what my grad school website looked like because Jai, yours looks amazing. So you should be really proud of, of what you have because um, this is, uh, it's been a while, but this is what, uh, what mine looked like when I was in grad school. <laughs> so yours looks really great and professional and um, I really liked how I just took note of that you had all those things right at the top of your CV and everything like that. I think that's really useful. Um, <laughs> so this is what my website looks like now. Um, I, like David, use a website service. So I use something called Wix, W-I-X. Um, yes. And there, you know, there are challenges to something like this for someone, you know, when they're starting off or depending on how much you're you know, your resources are because I paid for my own domain name, for instance. So like I'm paying money to have danielleaberg.com, whereas Jai is using GitHub, which is free. So, I mean, there are differences in terms of what level you want to go with things. Um, How much do you pay? So for my website and my domain name, I pay about a hundred dollars a year. Wow. Okay. And that can, I mean, as someone who's going to be a faculty member, that's not a big deal to me, but when you're in grad school, that is a, that is a big number. So, <laughs> you know, this might be something that you think about transitioning to later. I, I don't know. David, do you pay for your website? I, 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 the Weebly aspect is free. And then I bought a donut. So I bought davidvmartin.com um, hashtag. And that was like 10 bucks a year. I think, I think if you purchase it through the service like Weebly or Wix, it's actually quite expensive. But mm. But I you see. may have, I think for a hundred bucks, you also, I think you also, no, but I think you also paid to remove the Wix logo or whatever. So your website looks like more. Yeah, I don't have like, yeah. Yeah. And I Whereas I still have Weebly logo. I still have the Weebly logo. I have the domain name, but not the Weebly logo. So probably so, 20, 10, 20 bucks is the cheapest you can get. And there are probably other ways to do this. And I'll show you some aspects of my website. But the other things I wanted to show you um, is, you know, someone asked about, actually how you do this. So this is what the editing portion looks like where I literally just create text boxes or I add whatever I want, pictures, I add components, you know, whatever I do, it's just a very interactive, it's kind of like making a PowerPoint or a keynote. It's very, very simple. So I like it because I'm a visual person. So this is easier for me to deal with. Um, and the other thing that I really like is that I can do different things in the management of my of my website, such as um, look at different statistics of who's looking at my web page and where they are and things like that. And so the reason I especially bring this up was um, I just wanted to show you that during my actual faculty applications, <laughs> my website had a significant increase in traffic. So I just wanted to point out that at least when you're going to the faculty stage that people are looking at websites. Um, so this is what you pay for, right? To get a statistics of people, people visiting your website. <laughs> and it also shows me the breakdown. So most people only looked at my homepage. So that's something important uh, to note that if you just have a base there, right? 
if you just, you know, even had like that very first page that Jai had, that would be great, right? Because that's mostly like Jai said, they're looking just to get that base information about who you are and where your where your information is. Um, for me, equity and inclusion and diversity is important to me personally, but it's also something that's becoming a bit bigger part of the application. So 10% did go to that page specifically. And then in all of my application materials, I have a large Hubble program called Classy, and I like link to that in all of it. So I don't know if they went, clicked on my application PDFs directly or if they just went to that page, but people did also look at that thing because I advertised it a lot. Um, in terms of my actual web page, on, you know, and so other things that are harder to do, I think, in plain HTML, for instance, is like a lot of this, like, when you first load my web page, like, you know, my name zooms in and appears. So you can do stuff like that. Um, you know, I've made a lot of these kind of like interactive sorts of things that you can do. Um, looking at my different recent results. Uh, I have definitely have an about me section that when I was doing postdocs, I had more about myself personally. Um, and I actually made this a little bit more research focused and my history as I went on to faculty positions. Um, this is just kind of like an intro part of my research where people can kind of look at, you know, which topic they might be interested. I have these different kind of short little intro things to them. Um, and then I do also, like, like Jai mentioned, I have like a photo thing up that's connected to my Instagram actually. So I have to make sure I only want things on my Instagram that are okay to be seen, but that shows a little bit about who I am as a person. And I think that once you get to the faculty stage, they're looking to hire you forever. And so they want to make sure that you're a person they want around forever. So, um, and then I also yeah, I think that's a good point. Yeah, that's a great point. I do also have this contact point. Um, at the bottom and I have actually, so I get emails from this and um, I have had a couple of messages, not as many as you might think, but since the beginning of my website, I do have some there. Um, so like the about me just scrolls down to the about me, the research, I have a bunch of different uh, particular pages that I've developed. So for instance, for my REU student this summer, I've just started now creating like kind of a background basics page. And what's kind of cool about this is if you get really into your programming of your web page, you can create, for instance, like interactive spectra that you can put on your web page. So I've done this with, um, I, I make things in Jupyter Notebook, but so this is a Plotly through Python that you can then embed in HTML or um, an iframe within a website like this. So I imagine Jai could do the same thing through some standard HTML code. But so allows all, all these functions are available uh, using the tools uh, that are provided by the website. So you don't, so the how plot much time I made, do you spend the on, plot I on made this in function? Python. Mm -hmm. The plot I made in Python, which most of you are really good at, so mm -hmm. that's easy. Um, and if you've ever used Plotly, it can like export, export huh. it. Um, and save it and make it interactive. So then you can just embed it anywhere. So I've done some of that kind of stuff. I see. Um, like I said, a lot of people um, ended up going to, you know, my classy page, where is a place I can give a lot more detail about my program, team members, information about my data, because I'm trying to sell this as an upcoming, um, you know, I was able through Google, through Google, uh, sheets, you can create, you can embed interactive sheets within your websites, which is really fun. So like if you wanted to look at what my target sample was and you're like, I'm really interested in sorting on metallicity, I can sort this table or search through a thing. So that's cool. Um, and again, can people, these, can people download this table? I haven't done that yet. Probably. You could probably, I mean, I have other data sets that you can just download directly, but this one is um, embedded as a, as an interactive one. But yeah, we're working on all those functionalities still. So and you can so do a lot of cool stuff. And yeah. so does Wix, uh, Wix allow, this one, oh, this is still yours. Does Wix allow you to basically, like, basically free, free form edit HTML if you want? And so I guess that's what you've had to do to get in this fancy stuff. 
Well, so the, the table is super easy. They have all these add-ons and Weebly might be the same. They've created okay. all these like add-on apps and you're like, hey, I want to add an interactive table. And you now it's, I just add that like add-on and I can go to, um, I don't remember which thing it is anymore. One of these is now, is one of those things that I added. Basically, it was just a thing that I could now add and, yeah. I, t and, I, and I connect it to my link. So for instance, on Classy, of course, since I'm online, things, things want to be slow. Sorry about that. Um, so like you see, this is a table master that I added. It's a thing that they have. And I go into the settings and I just have it That's good connected to this URL and it does it for me. Um, and you can change different settings and, and design things. So you have some, some control over that. And if you're curious about, um, for, for these interactive plots from Plotly, they give you the exported code. So I didn't write any of the code. Mm -hmm. And then you just paste it, you paste it in here, whether it's an HTML or this is for an iframe. Um, and Plotly gives you that code. So you just have to put it in the right place in either, you know, your HTML website or in your iframe. And I'm not a website genius. These are all things I've just Googled quickly and have been pretty easy to do um, if you spend time on it. So uh, they make it pretty easy by just having these interactive things and they say, put your code here, you know? So it's like, it's pretty foolproof, which is great. Um, and then, you know, so I want to add those things that JE has to the beginning of mine. I think that's great. But I do also, I'm directly connected to my ADS library and my CV. Um, I'm starting to create a teaching website. So that's obviously something for, um, I, for myself. I have a page of useful links that I kind of like keep as a reference for myself. So that's a nice thing to do. Um, my equity and inclusion page is not only a place again that I keep resources for myself, but it's also a way to like really make promises of what I'm going to do, but also advertise what you've done. So um, if when you get to, especially to the faculty stage, I would highly recommend having something like this because it's becoming a really big component. And so this page is more about things that I've done and ways that I've interacted. And then, um, you know, just like I can, you can also use your website for yourself. So like, because it's important to me, I've just recently created a new page because I want to hold myself accountable and promise myself that I'm going to go through all of these resources that we should be learning and should have learned a long time ago. You know what I mean? So you can, you can also create things that are important to you that are for you on your webpage. Um, you know, so I think that that's like showing some of the personality too. uh, in that. So, um, yeah, those are the basics of my webpage. I don't know if anyone wants to see anything else, but those are the, like, maybe I replaced these with the things that Jayi had. I really liked that. So that's great. So yeah, that's what I have. Is Wix pay, uh, uh, um, a paid software? Like a, they charge you money for using Wix? Um, I'm not sure. I know Wix and Weebly are very similar. John mm. Chisholm also uses Weebly like David does. Um, I think Wix is free as, as the basic thing and, and, okay. Weebly's, and Weebly's free. And so I guess when I show mine, I can show you what you get with the free, base, the free, free Weebly. Because the only yeah. thing I paid for is the domain. Everything else is free. Okay. Right. That's good. So. Yeah, I mean, we see a different approach, like using this modularized software to develop a pretty um, website too. So I made I made this one with HTML. <laughs> 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 oh man! You look so scared in that photo. I do. I guess I looked scared as a grad student. It's a, <laughs> it's a scary time. Okay, thank you so much, Danielle. Uh, how about, um, you know, David, you wanna give an example and then uh, Matthias, and then we can have some um, Q&A session. Sure, okay, I'll just, um, let me share my screen. Uh, let's do um, this one. 
Okay, this is all being shared. Yep. Okay, so yeah, just go to go from start weedly.com. Um, I've already logged in, I do it with Facebook. Um, I didn't I don't get hundreds of views, I got 14 unique views in the past seven days, so go me. Um, let's go edit edit website. So I'll show you actually what the website looks like. So it's not super pretty. Um, you see, you get the little power by Weebly. That is a function of it being the free version. One of the things you pay to pay is to get rid of that, but otherwise it's not too much. Um, pretty, pretty basic. I quite like having, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the ones where you sort of have to do a lot of vertical scrolling. It looks good on mobiles, but I'm not sure it looks amazing on desktops. So I like having the, being able to move around up here, but pretty, pretty basic stuff. I that quite a criticism, like David? Pardon? Is that a criticism? No, 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 I, no, no. I was, it's just my own person. That's my own personal preference. I, I know, old fashioned. Um, this, this definitely needs figures. It's just a slab of text. Um, but I did actually quite enjoy discussing the writing, the papers in a simple way. Everything's super basic. Um, you know, you can get cool features with things like Weebly, for example, you can embed PDFs like this um, and also set them up. You can download them easily, um, but that's super basic. Like you can have much more um, comprehensive stuff. And so to actually edit stuff, I mean, let's, okay, let's make a few edits. I see it's really drag and drop, um, very, very visual. Um, you know, I can replace an image with anything from my computer in a second. Um, I can, I can resize everything, everything very easily. You can add pages super easily. Let's, right, let's add a page. Let's say, um, let's add a new page. Let's add, uh, let's add a blog. I've never done this before, but okay. David's blog already creates a new page here. Um, awesome. Awesome blog. Um, uh, I don't know, new posts. Like it's just super easy to super easy to add stuff, drag elements here. So I can add in an image. Um yeah, upload like everything is like super intuitive. Let's uh let's put in this one because that's absolutely hilarious. Um text, I don't know. It's a, everything's it takes you a little while to get used to the controls like here, like where I'm moving around the text, like putting on the side, like, but it's um, is a war criminal. Um, so I can, um, how do you, so what, I guess I, I, I post this blog. Okay. So I've, the blog page is there and now I want to, uh, publish my website. I click publish. Of course, it's trying to ask you for some more money again. Like you can pay to add new <laughs> features, the features, a lot of the analytics that Danielle talked about, at least for Weebly, you get very basic ones for free. Like you can see page views in the last seven days, but if you want like more in-depth stuff, you have to pay. If you want to have like, you know, an email at davidvimartin.com, you could pay a bit extra or whatever, but I'm not going to do that. And now let's refresh the website. And voila, David's blog is there and Trump is a war criminal. So uh, it basically, yeah, that's, Kind of it. Everything's super easy. You've got all these cool apps and stuff you can add in. Um, like if you've got an Instagram feed, for example, you can add that for free. Or if you want to attach your Facebook page, I know it's probably not relevant for us, but it's super easy to add in these things. And you know, some of them you pay for, but a lot of them are free. So that's probably all I've got. Any any questions? Probably should remove this blog. <laughs> so this is sorry, I got lost a little bit. So the so Weebly, what what is the output of Weebly? Is that going to give you like could I like is that going to give you an output HTML file that then you can upload on GitHub if you want it or like I got lost. Oh sure, so uh, sure maybe it wasn't clear. So I mean Weebly, um, I don't know if you can get an output HTML file from Weebly, but the idea is that Weebly okay. is both a website creator and a website host. Oh, I see. Okay. So it's not, yeah, that's sorry. That's, I should have been clearer. So both Weebly and Wix, you are getting the website hosting. So you don't need to use your GitHub host or your Ohio state. 
um, host or anything like that, you get it through um, Webu. Now I'm sure there's some file size limits on it that the free version is probably lower than the paid version or whatever. But I mean, for just putting text and stuff, that's not an issue. But uh, yeah, you, it, your the output like literally when I click publish, that's it. The site's there. Um, you know, there's no there's no middleman, and I've never touched a line of HTML in my life. I mean, I don't really like coding that much, so. Yeah, I'm not sure what a non-custom um, website URL looks like, but basically you would just get your website and whatever you created in, in that editor would be what is there. Yes, so, it would just, it would be uh, davidvmartin.weebly.com, I think. Oh, really? I think it would be, I think it would be that. Well, it's, I mean, the other one was blah, 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 dot github dot io. So it's the same thing, but I'll admit github kind of looks cooler for an astronomer, <laughs> but um, as I said, like, like buying the URL, don't buy it through Weebly or Wix. If you buy it separately, it's honestly like 10, 20 bucks a year. It's not the most, ex it's not the most expensive thing ever. Um, and like you're using this to like apply to things and like in America, you pay 50 bucks per grad school application. So 20 bucks for a website. And also maybe your advisor would put it as a research thing. I don't know. Um, so maybe I'll unshare unless there are any other questions and uh, next person. Yeah, I think it's a good point that uh, if you have a paid website within, you know, if it's not super expensive, you probably ha can ask your advisor. <laughs> That's funny. I mean, <laughs> um, Romy or, to or, or, um, or um, stop watching Netflix for a month and then you have your website. Nah, I'd rather watch Netflix. <laughs> um, Romy, general question is having an academic website replace having a LinkedIn. I, I think, I think, no, I don't, I think you should have, I think you should have both. I don't know. This is open. I don't know how much LinkedIn gets used within academia, but I think if you leave academia and I think, I mean, just as a PhD student, you obviously want to have an open mind. I think you definitely would want a LinkedIn. But within academia, I don't know, maybe the website's more important. But also, I, I, how important is ResearchGate? I can never actually, is anyone else on ResearchGate? I can never gauge if this is important or not. In Europe, I don't do research, so I'm not on it. Oh, okay. John is suggesting it's more important in Europe, but I don't know. I know, I rarely go to ResearchGate. I also yeah, yeah. rarely go to ADS ResearchGate. All the time. Yeah. I don't know. I guess that's sort of an open, I mean, that's maybe a question we should discuss. I mean, you know, what is the purpose of your website? Like, are you trying to use it to get a job? Are you trying to use it to like build a name for yourself? I guess the two are kind of connected. Are you trying to like outreach to the public? Are you, as Danielle mentioned, trying to do something that sort of helps yourself? And um, it's, these, are all, these are all, yeah, good, good questions. Another thing I would say along with the lines of having a website that is up to date and um, everything that's been discussed so far is make sure your profiles for the universities that you're at also contain your up to date information and have a, like a recent picture and your bio and your research and everything else posted on them. Um, because those are some of the things that are going to come up first when people are searching for you. It's like, okay, well, they were here. What did they do? And it's just a blank page. It's not helpful for anybody. Um, or a student that might be looking for you in the future or whatever. Yeah. And I think, and like, if, I mean, I'm going to my Eros U site. I've got, I mean, I've only got my photo and most basic education details, but yeah, it links to your professional website. So, you know, you're not going to make your OSU website super pretty, I, I would imagine, but then your professional one. No, but just having current information. Yeah, for sure. Particularly, yeah, for students, I think it's a great idea because they want to see someone that's like official looking. Another random point is this whole idea of updating your SEO information. So basically what connects to Google and how things are searched. So if you don't create that connection, is anyone familiar with that? Not really. Okay. I can show you. So basically if you want yours to be the first 
the first thing that comes up, you want to make sure that you have um, this SEO. Like I can show you really quick what it looks like on my webpage of how I do it. Um, you might have to Google how to do it on other things. I'm not sure. But that gets handled by, I think that's the other advantage of having a Wix or Weebly like thing is if they handle that Google, like you can, you can sort of edit it and you can, and I think much easier. Yeah. So basically this is like making sure things come to the top. Um, and so like I get to put in like what, what is here and edit kind of like, the you know pages past just my name i can edit what the url is so i can say like slash classy slash you know equity slash teaching slash whatever i wanted to do but you can you know when they google it what title comes up for you what additional information is on there so you can actually change these things um to boost to make sure people are actually finding you uh relevantly and what they see so they click on click on your results so and even that preview, because sometimes you'll see people's websites and the preview will be like index.html or something like that. Like it's not saying personal website of Daniel A. Berg, Dan Kedbo, like it, it, and it kind of looks unprofessional. Right. Yeah, this oh. reminds me of uh, another, tri another trick of um, boosting the chance that people finding you uh, are going to share my HTML. Uh, language there uh advanced okay i can i can just share yeah share so if you have this matter name here this is a trick that i uh i was told by my cs friends they, they told me that if you add this name so one of the google uh, the google algorithm will look for those things so if you people hit your name or other related the keywords then then your 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 uh the the result search result will put your um the matching all right if you have all the keywords that people search you then they will put your name on top and also the more people searching you the the higher rank or the the higher up in the list of uh, search result your website will be so this is some uh, something that you know I would like to share I, I find it useful I'm not sure how much that helps because I don't have a statistics of people using looking at my website um, and uh, by the way I also I have all the HTML um, 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 stored in the uh, at Ohio State uh, website uh, it is a kind of annoying every time I, I, I switch position because um, you know I, I go from uh, Yale to Caltech and then back every time I change I have to migrate my server from um, uh, EL Caltech and then Ohio State and then now I don't have to move anymore hopefully so I think this is becoming more permanent um, so everything but I have I end up having to edit my Yale and uh, uh, Caltech website to redirect the people to my current website so it's kind of annoying. So I think that's one of the advantages of using GitHub to host your website. Um, and also another advantage of using GitHub is that you kind of manage your website and your other code like at one shop. Um, so one stop shop. So it's, it's kind of convenient. Um, yeah, that's my point here. So um, do we have uh, any questions on, um, personal website development from the audience? I have a very simple question, sorry. Go ahead. I'm gonna share my screen real quick. So if we go to my webpage, how do I go for, you know, once I have it, you know, if I go to JIE's page, he has the, you know, personal website link, but I don't have it. How do you, how do, you do that? You contact you know me. <laughs> huh? yep. I think what, what happened for me is that I contacted David Will and he mm -hmm. added that for me. Yep. Uh, I think now, just send Glenn an email. Oh, Wayne's saying Rick or me. Okay. Okay. Thank Glenn you. doesn't actually have access to our website. You have to take training. And so he has not completed that yet, but if you need anything added or changed, Rick or me. Okay. But the idea is that then I would send you an email with my URL and that's it. And then you'll put it there. Yes. 
and G, sorry, uh, can you share the code you showed to us uh, in the chat? Yep. Thanks. Yeah, and also, um, yeah, since we have some time left, I, uh, Steve, um, I forgot his last name, Steve, um, hold on. Steve Prohira, Steve Prohira, um, he asked me to, uh, you know, basically to just to, to share uh, his website and just to give, give people uh, a taste of uh, what uh, a website could be if you use uh, HTM directly developed from HTML. I think it's a interesting website to look at. Uh, you know, this is definitely very personal because um, I I don't really agree his color scheme. So uh, let's first look at uh, the this. Uh, this is very normal, right? Uh, you have picture his trip to Antarctic. And then if I click other places, bam, this color is really <laughs> blowing. <laughs> and then CV blue, contact red, other green. So he, for some reason he likes it, but it definitely gives people the very strong impression that. <laughs> He's taking the piss. This is hundred percent taking the piss. <laughs> okay. It's mesmerizing yeah. looking at his website. But this is all about the language. I think it's interesting to share, but it has all the component, right? Your code, your CV, um, your recent uh, activities, your contact, and uh, something about you. So I think it's a, uh, you know, as as long as it works and give people, a, you know, um, some impression of you like your personality or your research i think it works right definitely people will remember your website and then oh another thing i would like to share is i want to show my website which is developed about uh nine or ten years ago um, def um you definitely need some component that when people look at you they will know you, what you look like your title and also i provide uh, the link of my cv and the publication and the one thing useful we also talk about it is to have your own ADS page so that people can look at your paper directly. I I have this, I manage this uh, um, public library using ADS service, so that is interesting. And also, uh, I think a while ago, uh, I think Jai or other people mentioned, like if you have ADS, you can create this cluster, word cluster. I find it interesting because I think people will have a, a direct impression of what you do and what are the keywords of your research. And then they will, you know, people learn about you quickly about what you do. Um, so I think it's interesting also, it's pretty picture to put on your uh, website. And uh, another comment I have is that, um, since nowadays people are using mobile phone all the time, so it's very likely that people will look at your website using mobile phone. So you want to make sure that the website you developed um, uh, is compatible with uh, you know the mobile phone, because sometimes the picture is too big, too wide, and the mobile phone it takes a lot of uh, maneuver to 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 look at the website. You want when you test your website, you want to test the different uh, um, web browsers. Chrome, Safari, you want to test different the platform, computer, uh, mobile phone to make sure your website looks uh, pretty on every browser and the platform. I think it's a, it's a good way of testing uh, for testing. And also uh, I kind of break my uh, research interest in different the category. Uh, I keep the front page short, um, you know, just so that people without any patience for people without patience. And if they're interested, they can connect, uh, you know, clicking. And one thing that I find I, I would uh, improve is that the size of the image takes some time to load. If you have a low internet speed, slow internet speed, and then it takes a while to load this image. So if you have a high res image that does not contain too much information, you want to 
down, like down sample or that, um, you know, um, degrade the resolution so that these pages can load it quickly. Um, and then, you know, for each project, they have project, publication, press, things like that. So I think if you can group your things in, in terms of whatever your grouping um, um, conventional mechanism is, I think it's nice to group things uh, uh, into a different project so that people with different interests that can look at your website with more with a more focused search. So uh, that's what I can say uh, about it. And also I added some personal information in my biography so that people get to know me as a person. I, I talk about my research, my track, my research, and then uh, what I do in spare time. I think it's definitely make it more personal. Why do you uh, like the Ravens? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a football fan. Um, so yeah, I think it's, Make it as concise as possible on the first page and also leave enough option for people who want to get to know you more. I think that's, that's what I want to say for, uh, for, the, um, for your personal website. Um, yeah, I just wanted to make one quick comment that mm -hmm. if you use something like, um, if you end up using something like Weebly or Wix, they have um, at the top two things that you click, whether you're looking at your a desktop version of your site or the mobile version of your site okay, that's good. and it automatically um, switches it to try to be more mobile friendly and then you can make small edits within there so it's it's another a nice benefit of using something like this is it shows you both previews and yeah that's good to know that. yeah because yeah. this thing is developed like i said a decade ago i basically adapt other people's uh web page to make it mine um, it was nice before, but now compared to other website, I, I mean, it's not that bad. It's okay. And uh, I also want to share another one that I find it pretty. This is Yuan San Ting. He's uh, is now a system professor at ANU. He gave a colloquium talk uh, last semester. Uh, I find it uh, very pretty, and in this web, I, I'm not sure what website he, uh, what uh, tool he used, but I just find it, uh, you know, it's. Is nicely designed with this nice background, and but you have to definitely you have you have to scroll up a lot to find a lot of information. This is again something I do not like because you know you get at the first glimpse, the at the very top of the page. Um, but I think the the design is nice, and you know you definitely have other people's website who you like. But I just want to share, you know some of it. And I think his public outreach uh, component is very nicely done here. He had some YouTube video um, outreach here. Very nice YouTube video. Cause you, you, you make something you're very proud of that you, you just need to put it on the website so that people use it all the time or people get to appreciate your product. I think that's very important. It's also a self advocate, right? There's no shame to advocate your work on your personal website. So, so gee, I was also gonna say, even though it's scrollable, the nice feature that this website added is at the top, they've made it so that their mm -hmm. menu yep. stays in place. So you can mm -hmm. you know, at least easily go back to home or a different section mm -hmm. without having to scroll up. So that's a really nice addition. Yep. So um, that's all I want to share. Uh, and also we're approaching the 12, 15 mark. Uh, I think um, without, if we don't have any uh, other burning questions, we can conclude uh, the workshop this time. Uh, again, uh, this quick question. Week, yeah, go ahead. Um, Jay, you have this on your website and I've seen it on a few other websites I've just been looking at. Um, what is, like, is there a, reason to have both like ADS link and the Google, Google Scholar link? Like what's oh. the advantage of Google Scholar? Uh, I, I actually don't know. I, <laughs> I just feel like <laughs> since people use different things, I, I better provide like two different versions. But I think in astronomy, like ADS is used much more often than Google. And what I found for Google is that the citation count is, the citation count on Google sucks. <laughs> really? Mine are higher. <laughs> well, well, it's definitely higher because it comes like the archive version and the public version twice. So, yeah. But yeah. 
physicists use Google Scholar more. So if you end up applying, for instance, to be a faculty member in a in a physics department or you know, a liberal arts college or something like that in the future, then then it's relevant to have something that they're more familiar with. Okay, that makes sense. And yeah, um, sorry to skip you, Matthias. Uh, you don't get a chance to talk about uh, develop the website development. Um, That's fine. I wasn't really prepared to, I wasn't expecting to have to talk about it. So like I, I would I would just like show you my website and like my GitHub page because I don't have, I would have to actually I haven't done it. I'm on my desktop right now and I did all my, the actual stuff on my, like the GitHub repository is saved locally on my laptop. It's mm -hmm. not really set up to show anyone yet. So yeah, that's fine. Yeah, uh, we'll save it for the uh, next time we, we, for the discussion. And uh, um, yeah, and, uh, the next workshop will be coming up in two weeks and we have not decided uh, the topics. If you have something that you would like to talk about, uh, for example, research statement or uh, one thing that had just come up to me, which is usage of GitHub. Like if we can find someone who can give us a, a tutorial of, um, you know, the, the basic of GitHub, uh, I think it's, it will be very useful. Um, so whatever you have in mind, uh, any suggestions, send it my way and uh, uh, we'll uh, reconvene in two weeks, discuss another things that would be important in career development. All right. Bye everyone, have a good weekend.